Well, it says that the recording has started. I, I will have to take StreamYard at its word. I will have to take StreamYard at its word. The audio is picking up. Um, this is a pre-record. So that's that. Um, bit of an issue getting set up um, here today. The uh, The camera keeps fucking cutting out. Um, it's not the actual camera. It's some sort of weird permission, like some fucking shit in the background is... Uh, is cutting in and knocking it off, which is very strange. So it may, if it cuts out, um, maybe I'll uh, do it from the uh, fucking terrifying murder view where I just look into the uh, the thing or I'll try to reestablish it. But just a heads up that that might happen while we are going through here. But you don't care about that because you are gazing upon the magnificent, uh, the inspiring, the awe-inspiring beauty of the Virgin Mary. Now, of course, we used to start every every show here with women with large uh, breasts on, on the screen, um, but I got a content strike uh, perhaps for that, perhaps for showing a video of um, Antonio Brown fondling himself in a, a pool in the Middle East, it, it, any number of things. Um, but I did get a stern talking to from the powers that be at YouTube about using such sexually charged content. Um, so now to be in compliance with uh, with our tech overlords, those are the people who run the world now, uh, instead of showing you large breasted women at the top of the show on the screen, I show you a, a, a modest woman, a woman uh, who has covered up uh, the most private parts of her body. She does not bear them to the public. Um, and who could possibly be more modest than the Virgin Mary? Uh, you know, not even, she didn't have even have sex and she bore the, the child of God uh, the, who, would, who would come to, to save us all. Um, so so that's, that's why she's on the screen. And if you don't, if you don't, uh, understand what I'm talking about. The, the way to find out is to go to YouTube where I do my live stream. I also share the link to my Facebook and Twitter. I'll, I'll give those out as well, but search sack tap live on YouTube um, or at Mike's golden streams, um, Mike Montone at Mike Montone on Twitter, facebook.com slash the savage crew. I'll, I'll always tweet the link out to the show and share it on Facebook after it's over, usually we go live eight o'clock on Fridays. This is a, a pre-record. It'll run on YouTube at eight o'clock Friday. But uh, I have a uh, I have a Christmas party to get to this evening, um, which as much fun as I have um, doing this live stream show, um, you know, the the party is going to have things like food and women and, and drink and you know lively and body conversation. We have lively and body conversation here, but uh, it's you know I can't. Uh, I believe my friend is making uh, barbecue pork sliders. We don't have those here, so I'm gonna you know I'm gonna eat those. I'm gonna wear fun Christmas clothes. It's gonna be a good time. It's the holiday season. We should be out. We should be out doing these things. We should be out. Um, out like the camera is right now son of a bitch get fucking back on there it is oh the nice thing about this is i only have to press start cam when it goes out when the camera itself gets disconnected then i have to uh then i have to actually reconnect the camera that's nice that's nice in any case i was just uh, extolling the virtues of of getting out and socializing during the holidays um, to enjoy the the time we have here on earth, right? Because we will all, if there's one thing that's certain, we will all die one day. So this is a pre-record. Um, after that, I'm going to, I'm going to take off Christmas week and new year's week. And then I'll be back in, uh, in early January. Pomegranate juice. Very good. Um, yeah, uh, first Friday in Jan January, I should be back live. I don't, I don't see why that one would be a, a, a pre-record. But uh, yeah, enjoy some modestly dressed women. Check out the, uh, check out the stream. Uh, tell your friends about it. I've we're at six hundred eighty followers on on YouTube right now. I, would, I would love to be close to seven hundred by, um, 
by year's end. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't think 20 followers in two weeks for, for a show of this size is, uh, is really within the, uh, the scope of possibility. But, um, then again, there are Christmas miracles, but, uh, it's good to, uh, good to be hovering around the 700 mark. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get going. Maybe if I was better at transitioning instead of saying, so let's get going in a very meek manner, maybe then I would have more, uh, more people, people following me. Um, okay. Here we are as in happy olden days of yore. It's late September. I am in the spirit. I'm pre-recording this thing because I have a Christmas party to get to. Let's have some holiday fun. The Sack Tap Live. Christmas Spectacular starts now. You're listening to the Savage Sack Tap. It's not a podcast. It's not a half cast. It's just a quick shot to the balls to help you finish off the week. We're cutting through the bullshit, filling your Friday with rage-fueled logic, and cracking a few jokes along the way. So grab a bag of frozen peas. There's a Savage Sack Tap coming your way and oh how spectacular it will be um seasoned greetings i am mike montone this is the uh the savage sack tap or sack tap live if you are watching on youtube um christmas spectacular in past years uh a much more lively active show for christmas and the uh you know the audio versions of those are up. I think uh, that we did. I did video last year. I think it was uh, my sister and I talking uh, about like family Christmas stories and and shit. Of which I will uh, I'll tell one shortly. Uh, but I've been doing the the Christmas episode ever since I I started the show. Um, past years I've had you know a bunch of people like my my brother and sister and uh, friends of ours on the uh, on the show. So there are a bunch of bunch of older ones. You can scroll back through the archives. We always have. Uh, a good time on it to me uh to this year it is me flying solo for it my uh my brother and sister both have very very young children um my my nephew just turned one my niece is less than two months old so they were not readily available to sit down and podcast at four o'clock on a friday afternoon um uh, but it is uh it is what it is uh you know it's we we make accommodations for family on uh, Christmas, and I make this accommodation by by bringing all of the entertainment to you this evening with uh, with no help from those two shitheads. Um, no, Merry Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Actually, they got me. Uh, they got me an awesome fucking gift. They got me um, one of those on it nutrition. Um, Actually, I have it right here. It's early. Early Christmas present, fucking on it nutrition primal bell. Hell yeah. It's going to be. It is going to be difficult for anyone to uh, to top that gift from uh, my one year old nephew and my two month old niece. So I uh, I thank them greatly. That is definitely definitely the gift of the year right now. Um, but yeah, I fucking. I fucking love, love Christmas. I wish the comment section, I'm sorry I'm not here with you this evening. I, I wish you boys a Merry Christmas and all the, uh, the fine people who have reached out to me on, on social media and through, uh, you know, at Gary underscore Moiler, M-O-Y-L-E-R on Instagram. Um, we will talk a lot about Christmas. Before I get to that, there is just something that was driving me fucking nuts this week because it uh it happened twice and i need i just needed to complain about this to someone and you guys are that someone um i'm taking the elevator and there's You know, it's six o'clock in the fucking morning. You know, you're a little, you're still tired. You're still kind of waking up, getting into the day. There's a, there's a, a bank. There's a massive bank of elevators. 
It's like six fucking elevators. You miss one, next one comes. Boom. And this guy rushes to uh to get on the elevator. Fucking rushes as the door is like one of those as the door is closing, sticks his arm through the uh the thing to get on the elevator and I mean, we're going to the same floor, but why? Well, I'm really bothered by the impulse to do that. Um, and I'm sorry I was a little slow in deliver, uh, delivering that. I'm now very like worried about the, uh, the camera cutting out because it, uh, it's happened so many times already today. Uh, but it was just fucking infuriating that, uh, you know, twice this week, it might have been two days in a row, I was I was getting on an elevator and a fucking guy just get he just gets on like he can't do well enough to do the thing. It's not like it's at six in the in the morning. The fucking lobby is buzzing and there appears people, you know, it's it's hectic. It's the, the height of of the day's commerce is is being conducted like none of that shit. It's an empty fucking lobby. Stand there. Look at your phone for 30 seconds. Just do that thing. I won't be offended. Um, Then, because you have to, based on the timing there, that means he's only like a few seconds behind you. So it has to have seen you go into that that elevator. Um, That especially to do it twice. Um, I I saw him going up one of the days, and I did this. You just take out your phone, you pretend to be fucking around, you see the guy go in, you give it enough time for the door to close, it goes up, you go, you press the button, and then you you get an elevator of your own. You There's no reason at that time of day to join someone. The one day he got on the, I was on the elevator already, and then he got on shortly after me. The next day, I was standing there waiting for the elevator, and he just... He, he stands up. We're, we're going to the same floor. So he stands next to me and gets on on the elevator. Um, and a guy got off the elevator, too, when it got down to the ground floor. And we went to get on, which that's the worst. Getting on an elevator. Get it, there, getting on an elevator after a lone male gets off is bad because you know he he ripped ass in there getting on an elevator with some fucking dude who lacks the the social awareness to to not share an elevator while you know you're bathing in some strange guy's fucking fart is fucking bad Like, that might be an all-time shitty way to start your day. Uh, Especially within the context of commuting into, you know, it's midtown, you're on a packed bus, you're fucking, you're shoulder to shoulder with everybody. Americans are, are in incredibly poor health, so people are just hacking and coughing all over the place. Everyone's smell like... People smell like a few people smell like weed. Few people smell like cigarette smoke. And then I live in a, a you know Spanish area, so uh, a lot of people smell. There's like this faint smell of fucking adobo, um, like baked into their clothes. Um, and you're all on top of each other. And there's an Indian guy making a phone call, and a, a bunch of 25 year olds playing fucking TikTok videos on their phone and making noise. You go through that. Uh, you walk through the, you know, the, the arguably just one of the biggest shitholes in America, Times Square. Um, and then you're on an elevator, breathing in fart with a fucking idiot who doesn't know that you, you, you're not supposed to ride the elevator with people if there are other elevators available. Um absolutely fucking infuriating why what are you doing 
go. You can have your own, literally, wait wait a couple seconds, and you can have all to yourself this magical fucking elevating compartment. It's fun. You ride up. You feel like a fucking astronaut. That we have to stand in there looking at our phones now. Fucking, I have to awkwardly pretend that I don't want to fucking kill you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like literally, just like just stifling every every predatory impulse to fucking to you know pummel pummel an opponent and take their possessions. Like in the wild, like that's why people started waving at each other in the old days is because you come across someone else out in the wild and your your fucking animal impulse is just to is to beat them and and take their possessions and acquire wealth um so people started waving uh as as a means of saying look i'm waving to you with my hand because i'm not using it to smash you in the face um and then snap your neck um yeah but uh, no i don't think that's just one of those things to me that just that especially early in the morning when like like those are your last couple breaths before you dive into the work of the day and you just want to kind of be in your own thoughts and fucking chill out and just it's just before you have to click on and some fucking dick just comes in and and invades your space horrible i am a big personal space guy huge personal space guy uh a love seat or like a small couch that's a seat for one person get get the fuck out of my space um again again i don't know if i don't know if i'm the only one like this like i always i assumed it was because of going like i spent a lot of time when I was in Iraq meeting with um, like tribal leaders and going to, like police stations and stuff and like being in very kind of close contact outside the wire with people who, the, you know, there's always that potential for uh, for treachery and danger. So you want to keep people at a physical distance. Um, so it, like I said, the reason we wave to each other is uh, so we don't uh, we know we're not going to beat each other mercilessly to death. Um so to me, like having having that space to engage an opponent and prevent an attack is uh, is very big. Or I, at least I assume that's what it is. Uh, maybe I'm just on the fucking spectrum and I don't like people getting near me. Um, but either way, I feel I'm a big uh, I'm a big personal space guy. Anyway, I just needed to spend an excessive amount of time blowing off steam about that. Uh, but I feel like you can all relate. Like you, you've definitely dealt with people like that. Um, there's another class of them that I deal with on a pretty regular basis at the the light rail station here. There's an elevator. It's a one story up and down. You you have to take the elevator. They only open up the stairs if uh, if the elevator's broken. Um, there are two elevators, and they just go up and down, up and down on a kind of constant loop. So if you miss one, the next one comes in two seconds. People will. People will throw themselves into this thing. Like they will run up and they will, and if you, because if you block the door, it reopens. Um, it won't close on you if it's working properly. I, I would love to see someone get their fucking hand cut off in it. Um, it would solve a lot. I think it would set an example and set a lot of problems. Um, but like you'll be in there and you'll be like, ah, I have the elevator myself. And um, some fucking, some fucking idiot will will dive into the elevator and and take up space with you and it's you know whatever uh where i live it's usually um some fucking uh some annoying high school chick watching fucking reels or whatever the fuck tiktok videos on her phone out loud and you get instead of instead of a nice 10 seconds of of like nice deep breaths and peace you get to hear uh, a bunch of like short video clips that you you didn't want to hear so that's that's that Ele elevator etiquette people uh but it's christmas i don't want to just sit here bitching about elevator douchebags um i want to talk christmas 
Particularly, I love a good Christmas movie. Home Alone 2 has been on a lot lately. Um, and I think we need we needed to talk about this bird lady. Um, she claims, you know who I'm talking about, the old bitch with the pigeons. She claims she became a Central Park pigeon lady because she got her heart broken, which that that to me that story doesn't a lot a lot about Home Alone 2 doesn't doesn't add up. Um, Kevin throwing a brick through the fucking window to save the donation money. Stupid. Stupid. First of all, I mean, his fucking insurance is going to go up. Yeah, insurance is going to cover it. It's going to go up. Um, and then, you know, the donation money was of no loss to the toy store guy. You know, he didn't give a fucking shit. Um, and if he's such a fucking wealthy fucking uncle... Uncle Penny Bags or whatever the f- that's not a that's not a, un- Uncle Money Bags or something Uncle something um, Uncle Paul um, but uh, he he could just he just make a fucking donate it's a, just a tax deduction for him like I think all, that was all like donated money or, or whatever it was just a fucking it, you broke his fucking window he was just, it was just a t- he was trying to get a tax write off. He didn't need you to fucking save the day. Fucking couple hundred bucks. You busted his fucking window. Fucking idiot. You know. What's the most that was in there? Thousand bucks? How much did it cost to replace a fucking... uh, A store quality window in uh, Midtown Manhattan? More than... More than the value of that fucking donation. Kevin McAllister, you fucking idiot. Um... But the bird lady, she gets her heart broken, and and that is what made her a, a bird lady. I don't, I don't understand the trajectory there. I guess like you don't go from, you know, you're dating and you're looking for Mister Right, and you meet a guy and things don't work out. He doesn't like you as much as you like him. And so the next thing you know, you're wearing fucking rags, living in Central Park, covered in pigeon shit like that. That needs to you need I need a better explanation for why that happened. That doesn't she just says I loved someone once and she says that he didn't love her the same way. And all of a sudden, that's it. Like she's in the park covered in bird shit. which. How do you not get a disease? Um, you don't just become a, a vagrant because a guy that that you liked didn't reciprocate, right? Like, ideally, you have, you have a job. Do you have a family? Do you have friends? Outside, substance abuse or serious mental illness are the only two real answers here, right? Because at some point, she tells Kevin, I think, that he's the first person she's spoken to in years. Which, to me, that doesn't make an ounce of fucking sense. Because there are there are pigeon people in New York City. Uh, I come across them all the time. But the thing is, they don't shut the fuck up. Like, New York City pigeon people will talk to anyone who will listen. All they do is walk around and talk. They, they are... The most verbose, craziest motherfuckers on the planet. Um, and also, a, a bit too portly to be a homeless woman. Not a lot of, not a lot of cherubish white women are, are homeless. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, yeah, no one, no one on the street, like, her, her cheeks are far too plump for her to be, to be eating that well. And to be homeless, unless she's eating the pigeons. Like if she, I guess if she, she throws a bunch of fucking bird seeds, she feeds a bunch of them. And then they approach, she grabs a couple and she, you know, snaps their wings and, you know, takes a, takes a bite. Like it's the, 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 you know, the the fucking poor man's Cornish game hen. Maybe that's how, but still, that's a pretty high protein meal. Uh, I don't think it would make you, she looks, she's got, she has kind of like a chunky look. Um, 
So that's bullshit. I totally understand why Kevin hates his family. Um, they, those, the McAllisters treat each other like absolute shit. Um, his siblings and his cousins are walking around calling him names. Uh, they, they purposely eat the only pizza that he likes. They, did they just underbuy cheese pizzas? They got like a, a fucking, they got 10 fucking pizzas. Um, and they, how many, how many toppings can you really get? Everyone, to one degree or another, likes planes. You'd think you'd, you get mostly plain, and then you basically get a, you know, if you're going 10 pizzas, I think you go, you're, you're getting at least three plain, right? Um, and then, you know, when he gets justifiably angry about it, and he lashes out, he's a child, he doesn't really know any better. Uh, he probably learned this behavior from them, because they're all, Terrible, terrible fucking people. I don't know how this is supposed to be a warm family movie. These people are awful. They sentence him to share a bed with a bedwetter in the scariest room of the house. It really is amazing. And this, I'm not saying every uh, family from the, uh, the 80s and the 90s was like this. But there really was, I think, a, an element of this in every family back then, right? Uh, I, older sibling, I, I, as I was, you're a little, you push the kids around a little abusive, a little abusive. Um, you know, uh, never like hurt, you never hurt them, but you always like to, you, you like to let them know who's boss. Um, uh, the par parents of kids back then were very, like now, I think you you see more people explaining things to their kids and kind of uh, talking to them like they're like they're people. Back then, uh, people would often use the phrase like use the phrase like "you little shit." I think in in Home Alone, he's referred to as a little twerp. Uh, but you know, I would I remember distinctly being called a little shit by adults, and not like an adorable like "ah, you little shit," like. Hey, you, you little sh listen up, you little shit. Uh, like adults speaking to us like that when I was a kid. And I don't I don't get the impression that it goes on anymore for better or for worse. It was entertaining. It was always always very funny when when adults would go off and get really mad. Um, I will say Uncle Frank is a criminally underrated Christmas movie character. And I don't mean just his major scenes like you have the shower scene. Uh, you know, look what, uh, what's the, look what you did, you little jerk. Um, but even his more low key, uh, I think moments when he's like, when he steals the, the crystal champagne glasses from the airplane and he's just stuffing them in his wife's purse. Uh, he's just an absolute curmudgeon always walking around in a shit mood. I bet uncle Frank is in a good mood for a few minutes after he's taken a shit or shot a load like after he's after he's he's blown up the McAllister's bathroom or fuck fucking pumped one into his wife in their guest bedroom I bet I bet Uncle Frank is an absolute peach to be around probably probably likes to throw around words that aren't too uh too too acceptable these days and definitely definitely the the big three um, you know, F the F the R and the N train. Uh, I, those are, those are absolutely coming out of uncle Frank. I think, um, yeah, he's, he was of the time, every family back then, I guess they still do. I guess back then the, that person in the family was, was usually maybe a little bit more boisterous and aggressive. Uh, I think now that person in the family is probably a little more um, kind of just like depressed and withdrawn and they let all their, they let all their shit out on social media. So you don't get uncle Frank, the walking curmudgeon. He's mooching off his, his wealthy brother spends the entire, he's definitely hammered the entire time. Uh, he's probably, if I had to guess, he if he hasn't gotten violent with Kevin at some point, he's gotten a little close. And Kevin or one of the kids or the wife, you know, he's gotten 
He's gotten a little a little loud, a little in their face. Everyone kind of refers to it as the incident. Like it only it, it it happened once when he was like wasted. Uh, but everyone worries now when he starts tipping a few back that it's gonna happen again. Um, and that was that was the the upper middle class Caucasian male uh of his age during the holidays, right? You're surrounded by by family. You're contributing very, very little to the gathering, uh, and you drink your way through the whole thing, and and create some really nice, fun, toxic situations. Um, what else? On uh, social media, social media, social media. <laughs> I don't know why. I just did a. I just said social media, like a, a really half ass trick. Social media people, you heard about it, they're posting. They banned me from Twitter, brought me back. Um, much like Thanksgiving, Christmas is another uh, holiday, one of those uh, holidays I absolutely love, where people like to, they like to put up a, an Instagram picture of like a roaring fire, maybe a nice gallery, holiday gallery, you'll get a roaring fire, some nice desserts, some foods laid out, uh, maybe a, a picture of a, a couple um, that they're out to see the tree or they went for cocoa or coffee in a walk and they're out and about. Uh, maybe maybe relatives in sort of matching sweaters. Maybe someone has on a nice Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself uh, Christmas sweater on. Uh, and it all gives the outward appearance a very, very happy, very healthy family. Uh, but in reality, these people all fucking hate each other. And and I love that. And that really is one of my favorite things is going through uh, Instagram during the holidays and seeing those kind of posts and and thinking back to myself like, uh, you know, don't I remember you like fucking talking about how you like to choke girls during sex one one day when we were hanging out like at the shore house? Like, didn't you say that was the only way you could get an erection? Like, um, or like it's like some chick that you're like, I've I've seen people do cocaine off of your tits, like, and you're and now you're like you're using like interlocking coffee mugs with some fucking chump who looks like he works in in middle management and it's all about warmth and happiness. I'm like, Oh, you're, there's definitely, there's definitely some degree of anxiety in there. Um, because seven out of 10 of these pictures feature very large glasses of, of white wine. Um, so that's fun. That's fun to me. Um, the Montone family, my family, what I have, I always appreciate it about my family and we've toned it down much. I think we've lost a lot of our, our energy just with age, to be honest. Uh, my parents are getting up there. My siblings have kids. Uh, and we're much more, we were always kind of gym rats. Like we, uh, we always worked out, but, uh, we've all become much more into like physical fitness and, and, uh, and, and taking care of ourselves. So we don't, things don't get quite as insane as they used to. Like there were a number of Montone family Christmases where, um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to name, <laughs> well, there are only, only a couple siblings to really go, but, uh, friends and family members of, uh, myself, myself included, uh, were doing, uh, you know, like cocaine and Adderall and just massive, massive amounts of of drugs and drinking for like, usually for Christmas, a good 72 hours straight, um, all the way through. Uh, so things tended, uh, to get a little ridiculous. I remember, uh, distinctly, uh, well, a couple times on, on Christmas, I almost got caught getting blown. Um, once was by a, a, a a girl I was dating at the time. Um, I will be intentionally vague about the uh, the year so that anyone uh, who knows any of the women I dated won't be able to figure it out. Um, but uh, I I almost got <laughs> almost got caught getting blown by a uh, a family member of hers. We were in a uh, a private area. Um, this. <laughs> Uh, and we were exchanging uh, Christmas gifts, and uh, 
a uh, a relative of hers opened the door while I had my my sweat down around my ankles, and uh, I only by the grace of ha- the fact that we were on an in an upstairs bedroom, and I heard the last couple footsteps. Did I have uh, a chance to yank my undies, uh, my uh, my sweatpants and undies up over my erect penis and kind of grab a <laughs> grab a the gift and put it on my lap, um, which if you ask me, the, the nice blow job was the, uh, the real gift. Uh, and there was another incident um, on uh, a Christmas Eve where I was being similarly serviced in um, uh, a basement. Uh, I mean, I, I, at my parents' house uh, by uh, uh, a, a woman that, uh, I was dating at at the time, and the the downstairs refrigerator was where a lot of holiday meals and like extra drinks and shit would be stored, because uh, the uh, the upstairs one that's you know where all the the everyday food is, um, and I had to uh, had to do a, a quick pants pull up that time as well. Um, both both filletings did eventually reach completion though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my well my my uh, my cousin knows about the uh, the one because he was upstairs enjoying christmas dinner while it was happening and when i walked back upstairs afterwards i gave him a i gave him a big thumbs up uh, <laughs> uh so he 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 knew what had just trans and he, he gave me the nod back he knew he knew what had just transpired um but uh yeah sometimes you got to get blown at christmas you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Um, there was a a Christmas where I almost urinated on all of the family's gifts. That was a good one. Uh, it was my junior year of high school. Um, I I was in the the slim space between football season and track season. Um, I didn't uh, I didn't drink that much in high school. I really started drinking a lot in uh, college. I would go out usually like during the football season. Uh, you know, contrary to uh, what uh, what TV and movies will tell you, your body is often too beat to shit to like go out to a fucking keg party. Um, you get to like a, a you know a couple just because you 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 want to have fun, but uh, you really I I would go out mostly. I would get do most of my drinking in between sports seasons. Um, so Christmas I would get fucking housed. Christmas. Uh, and Christmas Day, I would just get fucking wasted. And my junior year, I guess the uh, the presents haven't hadn't gotten put out yet. By the time my parents went to sleep on Christmas Eve, and I was like, "Hey, what the fuck?" So I was walking upstairs. I was like, "I wonder if I could sneak in my parents' room, and see where the I knew exactly where they would store the fucking presents." Uh, and I was wasted. I was like, "Fuck it!" Like, let me go see what's up with these presents. But I also had to take a piss, and my parents room where they would stash the presents it was just they weren't hidden away they were just sitting on a fucking couch the couch was positioned relatively exactly where the toilet was positioned in our bathroom um so i walk in i'm like oh i gotta fucking piss uh so i just i started pissing <laughs> i started pissing um in the uh <laughs> vicinity of the uh, the present it was very quick my mom heard me come in i don't i don't think i got an actual drop out i i think i was just about to uh to take take my genitals out my mother just yelled mike what the hell are you doing and i said i gotta take a piss <laughs> she's like she says you're, you're gonna piss on the christmas presents go in the bathroom so i did and then I was uh, so stumbling that instead of pissing, and I actually did this a number of times at my parents' house, instead of pissing uh, in the toilet, I accidentally started pissing. Uh, there was uh, a hamper where they would like throw all like the uh, like towels and shit after you shower, you just throw a uh, throw the towel in the uh, in the hamper, and eventually. Uh, the magic laundry uh, elves take it downstairs and take care of it for you. Uh, I started pissing on the towels. 
Uh, and I, I realized it uh, part of the way through, I think because my mother came and said, you're pissing on the towels or something to that effect. I was, uh, you'll have to forgive the inconsistencies in the story. I was a 16 year old uh, drunk teenager. Uh, and eventually I made it to the toilet to finish my piss. Uh, but that was, uh, that was one for the ages. There were a couple where we went out, we used to go out to a, uh, a bar on Christmas Eve uh, after, you know, the grandparents and everybody left um, and do, you know, you do cocaine in the parking lot and then you go in and have fun at the bar. Um, they'd have like, they'd have midnight mass on one TV and they'd have Christmas story on another TV and you run into people like you went to high school with, um, and you know, you see like, Hey, look, it's like a hot chick from a different, different town who, uh, who also wants to, to get hammered and get away from her family. Yeah, let's do some Coke. Um, Christmas. Um, and in invariably, uh, on a, a couple of occasions, those evenings ended with us bringing home street signs. Um, we found one just like, it was like the intersection of like Rockingham Place and fucking Ackerman Ave. And we just picked it up and carried it home and we threw it in the backyard and thought nothing of it until the next morning uh, when we woke to my father flipping out and threatening to withhold Christmas gifts until the street sign was returned to his to the rightful owners who he informed us were the uh, the taxpayers. He, we, I was yelled at. <laughs> my cousin and I were yelled at on Christmas Day because. Uh, according to my father, we ripped off the municipality. We stole from the taxpayers. And this is a terrible thing to do on Christmas, which you shouldn't you shouldn't say that to to a couple of twenty one year olds um, who who are still drunk from the night before, because you're only going to get fucking laughed at. Um, and of course, the the greatest Montone family. Christmas story of all. I think I have a short version or a version of this where my sister and I discuss it. But um, the uh, the year that on Christmas Day that night, my brother and I brought two uh, strippers home and uh, tried to have a little party in the basement, and were in and were interrupted by our mother. Um, we uh, we used to have this bar that we would go to called McMurphy's. And we would watch, um, we'd watch the Sunday night games there. And Christmas Day on uh, this particular year fell on a Sunday. So Derek, the bartender's old Navy vet, it's about my age, um, is like, "Hey, come on Christmas. We, you know, we'll all have a fucking party. Like, because there's usually no one there watching the Sunday night game." It's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, we'll shut the place down. Like, uh, we, we, you know, we, you guys want to get, like, get some, we get some women up in here, fucking reduce the, the sausage ratio to the fest. Hell yeah. Uh, so we, uh, we arranged for some entertainment to meet us at the bar at around 10 o'clock on, on Christmas day. After, you know, you go, you do the family thing, you nice di- you exchange gifts, nice dinner. Everyone's, you know, happy and wholesome and, and hugging. Um, and then, uh, and then you go to the bar. Now, uh, a lot of stimulants being used the night before. Uh, I was very hungover, and then I had to work. This is when I was working for Ten Ten Wins. I had to work a two p.m. to ten p.m. newsroom shift on Christmas Day, which isn't terrible because that means that you you know you get to you wake up, you spend the day with your family, uh, and then you know you go into work. You spend Christmas morning with your family, right? The important part. Um, so you do that. So I was coming home 10 o'clock. I get off, wrap up the shift and, uh, I'm, you know, I, I drove in, uh, so I'm hauling ass down fucking route four, get to the bar and I get there and 10 30, the girls were supposed to arrive at, at, uh, about 10, uh, to get things going. And the bar was supposed to be empty and locked except for us. The fucking bar is overflowing with people. My brother and his doofy friends are standing in the parking lot. Tell you, uh, a bunch of his, my brother's buddies were part of the uh, Sunday night football crew, so they were all in on the strippers. 
they're standing there talking to two women. I'm like, these must be the strippers because uh, at that time in their lives, um, you know, my brother has somehow managed to uh, procreate. But at that time in their lives, in, in their mid early mid twenties, uh, the the chance that two reasonably attractive young women would be talking to these guys uh, when there's a sea of dozens of others they could have chosen from uh, was non-existent. So I'm like, okay, so these are the strippers. Uh, so I walk up like, hello, uh, strippers. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, like, talk to my brother, you know, what the fuck's going on? Like, well, turns out the owner's daughter, the bar owner's daughter was home for Christmas break. She had all of her fucking college friends show up at the bar. Her parents are there. They're having a big like family, friends, Ridgewood High School. This is if you're in uh, if if you're in North Jersey and you want to take the Mike Montone reality tour, uh, head over to uh, McMurphy's in Ridgewood. Um, and the other bar I was talking about before, Fort Apache, is uh, now known as Stashes in Fairlawn on uh, Maple Ave. I think uh, heading towards uh, River Road and uh, Patterson. Um, but this is at McMurphy's. Um, so we're like, all right, well, the strippers are on the clock. We only have them for a couple hours. The deposit's been put down. None of us were financially in a position at that time to probably to even be hosting a private stripper party, uh, on a holiday for which I'm sure we paid a premium, uh, but also to be wasting a deposit of any kind. So we kind of conferred amongst ourselves. There were some options as to where we could take the event. Uh, a number of, of locations were pitched. Uh, we considered with our one friend's family, we knew, knew to be visiting Spain for the holiday. So we considered um, breaking into his house and doing it, but we weren't sure we could get in. Uh, our one friend worked for the DPW said he could let us into an office at the landfill and, and we could do it. Uh, that sounded a little too criminal and a little too, uh, a little too rapey. Uh, although in retrospect, it also seems like something that Tony Soprano would do. Like he would have an office at a landfill and he would have nowhere to go with like a Russian whore. So he would just be like, fuck it. I'm, you know, we're out for a drive. Let's go, let's go fuck in my, uh, my waste management office. So maybe in retrospect, this all would have gone a lot smoother if we had done that. And I know they kept a lot of porn there because I used to, I worked there when I was in high school and there were just stacks of fucking porn mags in the office there. So that might've actually been fun um, because then we would have strippers and porn. Maybe we would have got blown. Like it would have been a good time. That is not what happened. Uh, my brother and I kind of had a meeting of the minds and we said, there's only one way this is going down. We both know what that is. You and I are the only ones who have the balls to pull this off. Let's do it. We said, strippers, you may come back to our house. Um, so we, uh, the convoy heads out. We hit the ATM. We get cash. Get back to our place. Um, my parents' home uh, at the time. This is the uh, the same. This is all in the uh, same basement that I got blown in that Christmas Eve. So that's fun. Um, I'm going to give you a general layout of things. We have a garage with an old school barn door opening it. I when I say old school, I mean this house was built probably in like the 30s, and I I get the impression that that was the same door. Still very squeaky old wooden door, old fashioned latch and everything on it. Um, a lot, very, we were a, uh, a storage garage family. We were not a park the car in the garage family. So all the recycling's in there, sports equipment, lawnmower, all that shit. Um, makes a lot of noise when you walk through with, with the opening the door and, and all the shit. My parents' bedroom's right above that. Uh, we had a golden retriever at the time who would just get up and make noise at the slightest disturbance. And we had a downstairs bathroom, which had a vent that I later found out had some connection to my parents' room. A um, lot of things stacked against us when you're trying to clandestinely get strippers into your, your home undetected. Uh, my parents knew we were up to something that night. They knew that there was a some sort of celebration afoot. 
uh, and they did not trust it when when my brother and I were were out celebrating and and clearly with good cause. Uh, so first attempt is to get the strippers in just straight through the front door. Doesn't work. Uh, dog gets up, starts moving around. Fuck. Uh, my brother goes around the sliding back door. But I'm like, uh, that's going to, you're going to make a lot of noise going through there as well. So I'm like, let's go through the garage. I try to go in through the garage. We made so much fucking noise knocking over. Because it was Christmas the night, Christmas Eve the day before. All the recycling bins are, are we hosted. So all the recycling bins are full. Um, you know, there's boxes and shit. I mean, we're knocking everything over. I don't know if that woke up my parents, but it certainly, I have to imagine it did not help, help the situation. Um, so we finally, we get in downstairs. Everyone has converged on the objective from different locations, different points of entry. We're in the basement. The basement, there's a pool table. There's a bar. It's an L-shaped basement, and then well, it's a square basement, but it's L-shaped, and then there's a little room where it's the laundry room. Um, so you got the pool table, the bar, and then the other length of the L goes into like the couch and the TV area, and where where the computer is, um, and then that's how you get into the uh, the laundry room. Um, so we're down there. I got the Christmas lights on, nice. Nice mood. I got some uh, some light house music going. Like we're passing out drinks. The girls are in the bathroom. They're getting into their stripper attire. We're fucking. We're toasting. Merry Christmas. Happy birthday, Jesus. This is going to be a great fucking time. Um, and that is when things started going to shit. Um, the uh, I don't. So it's tough to remember the order in which all of it it happened. Um, but I think my mother was the first one to come down when I could hear the, again, the older, um, this was like an older house that my parents had got renovated. So it's still, some of the bones were still kind of creaky. Um, and I, I hear her come down and the basement door opened, the very noisy basement door opened, so we had time to tell the strippers to hide. She didn't even come all the way downstairs this time, so we're good. She poked it, her head down, she sees the guys hanging out, drinking drinking beers, and setting up the pool table. So she's very suspicious, but she doesn't know that something is up yet. So she's just like, kind of... Kind of in a, a, a haze, just woke up. Like, what the hell are you guys doing? Well, we're just hanging, hanging out, having a couple of drinks. Uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Mom. Love you. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Montone. Hey. hey. Um, and she uh, she goes back to sleep. And we had, um, in our defense, we were always a uh, the house that, like, people would come back to uh, after the bar. So it wasn't the first time on Christmas or Thanksgiving that we'd shown up with uh, a bunch of you know, a bunch of our friends. Um, this was pretty, pretty typical behavior. Um, so th- I didn't think that it would be too much of a stretch for us to, to pull this off. Um, she goes, and then I think my sister came down. I think my sister was like across the street at the neighbor's house, having a glass of wine with, uh, with one of her friends. I think she came over and she knew that there were shenanigans afoot. So she wanted an update. So she came down. She saw my mom in the living room and it's like, you know, 11 o'clock at night at this point. And, you know, my, why, what the fuck are you doing up? Um, so my sister comes down to investigate and she is just delighted. She's disgusted and delighted because she knows that this, she knows how this is eventually going to unfold. Uh, but she's also disgusted at the fact that that we've brought two sex workers into the house, which you know, shame on her, really. Jackie, be be a feminist, you know. The, these were empowered young women out making money on Christmas. These are entrepreneurs; they're capitalists. Uh, I'm incredibly proud of both of them for what they were doing. I think they're making massive, massive strides uh, for women in the workplace. 
Um, in any case, uh, she goes back up. So we're like, all right, well, we got the girls here. We got the money. Like, let's start having some fun, huh? Turn the music up a little bit. Um, and the girl's like, hey, we're going to play some games. We're, uh, we're going to uh, put on a little show for you. Uh, and we'll play some games. The first game will involve you giving us money, but you can't use your hands. So me and one of my brother's friends, we both lay down. He lay down. He, he lies down on the couch. I, I put a blanket on the floor. I lay down on the floor. We both have uh, 20s hang, uh, sitting over our faces. And uh, the strippers are going to prepare uh, to retrieve them. Um, and ne- neither, neither us nor the strippers will be using our hands in this exchange. So very, uh, you know, fun was about to unfold. Um, and uh, it was at that moment that I heard the door open again. Like, fuck, strippers, hide. So they hid, uh, they hid behind the pool table. And like what what happened next was something out of like like a teen movie or like like a movie where like you know the dean is looking for uh, the frat bros who are up to no good or like they're on a fucking panty raid or something like that and they keep evading him in uh, in hilarious fashion. My mother comes all the way downstairs this time. The strippers are ducked down behind the pool table. One of my buddies, uh, one of my brother's buddies is just standing there with a pool cube, like pretending like he's uh, like he's playing. Um, And my mom comes, you know, walking around. Uh, She sees the towel on the ground and she just kind of gives it like a like, why is there a towel or the blanket on the ground? Like she's a little confused by that. She goes, looks in the laundry room. Uh, She looks behind the couch. Like She's looking all over the fucking place. Literally, the only place that she did not look was behind the pool table. I mean, she conducted a full inspection of the basement, save for a uh, a three foot by four foot section at the back of the room behind the pool, exactly where you would like hide um, if you were trying to avoid being seen by someone on the stairs. Uh, so in- incredible that she didn't uh, she didn't look there. So she she's remaining remains suspicious, and heads back upstairs. Um, so like okay, I mean the chicks are still on the fucking clock. Um, so we're like we gotta we gotta start having some fun here because it's like at the end the plan is to just fucking send them out through the garage, just speed just get them the fuck out like nothing happened um <laughs> uh, so we're like we can still pull this off uh so we we get to it again we retake our uh, our positions i'm on the floor other guys on the couch money's back on our faces the uh, the girls are coming back over fucking door opens again this is like minutes later, opens again. This time the strippers hide behind the arm of a couch, which provided far less coverage, but to their credit, they still evaded detection until literally a small piece of a fucking elbow was seen poking up from behind, I guess, the arm or one of the cushions. And my mom said, well, who, whoever is behind the couch, come out now. So the one chick, I believe, was completely naked. Like, I'm pretty sure she she had her at least tits out. If she was wearing anything, it was just a thong. But I'm pretty sure uh, she was she was ass naked. The other one was in more of, uh, she had like a, a kind of a, a sexy get up on. And like, honestly, they seem like they would be fun chicks to fuck. Like, they just seem like community college chicks. I, I think they came up from like AC or something like that. Like, they're literally just community college chicks from South Jersey who are making a couple bucks shaking their asses around. I mean, probably literally off the clock, I'm pretty sure. You know, any one of us, like, especially like, you know, this day and age probably could have pulled off fucking them. Um, 
in, in any case, uh, we are now in a situation where it's me, my brother, uh, one of my brother's friends is terrified because his dad's a fucking a fucking reputed nut job, and he's terrified that his father is going to find out about this and kill him at the age of, of like twenty three or whatever the fuck he was. Uh, so my mom is just going eye to eye with these naked strippers. She's looking at us. My brother's friends are all standing there. My sister enters the room at this point. She's like just taking it all in like holy shit like it's going down this is great um <laughs> and the questioning begins um and i think the first question was you know how old are you and to which they both uh said you know you know we're 21 22 we have id um which really like, you know, big <laughs> whew, <laughs> big uh, <laughs> ooh, dodged you know uh, because you never know when you order off off the internet, you know, you never know what you're getting. Why don't you take a seat right over there? He would be unwrapping a different kind of Christmas gift after the Glenrock police picked him up outside of the house. Um, yeah. Um, and then uh, I think he said he she looked at us. She's like, and did you pay them? My brother, for some reason, said no, he didn't, because I think he was afraid that she was going to get mad that you know, at the time we were both working kind of like bullshit, like part-time jobs. Like even my radio job wasn't full-time yet. Um, so I think he thought she was going to get mad if if he admitted to uh, paying for Christmas strippers instead of saving money for like rent or health insurance. <laughs> um, so he, he, he denies it. I'm like, well, obviously we fucking paid for them. <laughs> um, then... Um, I, I don't know if my mom brought it up or if the stripper just interjected with it. Like, I don't know if my mom said like, so what you're, you're paying these girls for blow jobs or something like that. Or if the stripper said, miss, we weren't going to suck your son's dicks or anything like that, <laughs> which is not many people. I, I really, I'm blessed to be one of the few people, um, whose family lore involves the line, we weren't going to suck your son's dicks or anything like that, uh, coming from a, a naked woman <laughs> to your mother on Christmas. Um, so that was that's something we can take from the incident. Uh, so it was at that point that uh, everyone went upstairs into the kitchen uh, my mother very graciously offered the girls uh, a glass of wine. They said no. They said they would just be getting on their way. They got dressed. Uh, she walked them to the door. Um, the, uh, the the girls uh, apologized profusely. Uh, I believe they did. They left a card or their number or something. They said if we were ever in uh, in AC, we could finish things. I think one of the guys actually did see them down there in Atlantic City. Um, and I don't know if they waved or said hello, but he did say that there was some uh, brief, uh, friendly contact. Um, but, uh, at that point we returned to the kitchen for, uh, for a, a scolding from, from my mother regarding what had just unfolded. And, uh, my, uh, my father came down, uh, he was, you know, aw awoken by the ruckus. And wanted to know what was going on. Uh, my mother informed him that she had just ejected two strippers from the home. And uh, it was uh, it was at that point that he just kind of washed his hands of the situation and went to bed. He uh, he just didn't want to didn't want to be bothered, uh, which I you know I thought was pretty nice of him. We were already ready hearing hearing quite an earful from mom. Didn't need dad chiming in at the moment, and really. You know, what are you going to say? I mean, if you think about it, it's, uh, is there a better way to celebrate Christmas than with, uh, with a couple of dancing broads in the, in the basement, a nice game of pool, a couple brewskis with the guys, the Christmas lights are on and, uh, you got two, uh, two chicks who are, are working on associate's degrees, shaking their asses on the, on the, uh, on the the living room uh, floor, that's fun. I don't even know if it's. I think if you have a pool table, 
it's not a it's not technically a billiards room. I think if it's a pool table, a bar, and a TV area, I think it becomes more of like a rumpus room. Uh, where we're you know, and you know what what who wouldn't want something like that uh, to go on in the uh, in the rumpus room? <laughs> There was plenty of rump in the room that day. Am I right? Um, fun. Um, I'm realizing now that I have gone over an hour here. Um, I had I had stories. I had notes. I prepared things. I spent time and brain energy. Um, I mean, I do... I will have to use all this stuff. Maybe I'll repurpose some of this into uh, a blog post because some of it's fun. But I don't know that we're going to do better than telling you about the Christmas strippers and we've already been going for an hour. I know I told you guys that story last year with my sister. I'll I'll wind up – I'm definitely going to tweet both of those out. Um but uh, yeah, that really is just for me one of the great Christmas memories of all time. And maybe this was the way to do it this year. Maybe maybe that was it. Just uh, just an old man in a, a Christmas sweater sipping pomegranate juice, reflecting on the Christmases of yore. Um, that's fine. Um, I did want to say, I'm not going to go deep into the story, but. Uh, You might remember a while ago, it might have been around Christmas time last year. Eh, I don't know what it was, but I've definitely done this story. So I just want to show it to you real quick. This guy. He, uh, he fucking murdered and, uh, what did he do? Cannibal Mark Latin- Latunsky gets life sentence for killing mutilation of grinder date. Um, and by the way, the uh, the guy that he murdered, his name was Kevin Bacon. So a lot of the uh, the articles, because they're trying to take take advantage of like SEO, because you know people will Google Kevin Bacon. Um, but uh, all the articles say in murder of Kevin Bacon. Uh, but this guy uh, has been sentenced to life in prison. A confessed Michigan cannibal was sentenced to life in prison for the Christmas Eve killing and mutilation of a man he met through a dating app in 2019. Mark Latunsky, 53, was handed a life sentence without the possibility of parole by a Shiawassee County judge after he pleaded guilty in September to the sickening slaughter of a 25-year-old hairdresser named Kevin Bacon. Latunsky was convicted of first-degree murder as well as disinternment and mutilation of a dead body, for which he received an additional 11-month sentence that will be served concurrently. He confessed to stabbing Bacon in the back and removing parts of his body, which he told investigators he ate. He said he cut off his testicles and ate them and considered buying a dehydrator to make jerky out of Bacon's muscles, which is fucking wild. Um, Bacon was reported missing by family members when he didn't show up to breakfast on Christmas morning in 2019. Investigators found his car parked at a Dollar General store, then tracked his last location to Latunsky's home in Bennington Township. Uh, His butchered body was found three days later, hanging upside down from the ceiling of Latunsky's basement. His ankles were tied to the rafters with rope. His throat was slit and body parts removed. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they met on Grinder, and this is, uh, this is the guy what done it, we'll zoom in on him, and, yeah, I mean, what a fucking Christmas, huh? You know, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? I mean, I, I guess obviously I just laid out a lot of reprehensible behavior that I, I, I conducted uh, on Christmas, so I get it. But you, what do you go? You go into this guy's house. How hard up are you? I have to think 
that you can find uh, a casual gay encounter in a, a safer, easier manner than going to this guy's house. You go to this guy's house and you, you get hung from a rafter and eaten. That you, that was just, that's par for the course at this guy's fucking house. Um, meet, you, you're going to go on fucking grinder. You meet, meet some fucking college twink and go, you get blown in his fucking dorm room or, you know, in the, the fucking passenger seat of your Civic or some shit. Um, don't go to this guy's house. Get, go find a, find a men's room with a fucking hole in the wall and get your fucking dick sucked through that. Don't go to this guy's. There, it just, anyway, <coughs> men are the horniest motherfuckers on earth. They're out there fucking. Um, you can certainly, dudes will stick their dicks into anything. You can find a non-cannibal to plow you, is what I'm saying, Kevin Bay. Poor too bad for actual Kevin Bacon, by the way. Because I believe when this story first happened, like Kevin Bacon was reached for people like, hey, did you hear about this? And he was just like, oh, that's, I think, pretty sure he was just like, oh, that's terrible for the family. I might be making this all up. Uh, but I vaguely remember that. Um, but also kind of shitty for Kevin Bacon because now people are going to see the name Kevin Bacon in association with this, like, gay cannibal stuff and people are like, what's he doing kevin bacon's doing what you met a guy on where like it's just gonna it's gonna lead to false rumors is what i'm saying anyway let me uh let me cleanse let me cleanse you of that with the holy mother once more we say goodbye to uh, our Christmas Chiron for another year. Welcome back, the mother of, uh, of Christ. Um, there's no comment section to go to this evening, of course, because it's a, a pre-record. Um, so I will, uh, I guess I'll see you guys next year. I'll take, like I said, taking a couple weeks off here to just relax, soak up the holiday, spend time with people, catch up on rest. You, you know, I may throw up a blog post, maybe clip a couple of videos at some point, just so uh, my brain doesn't turn to complete mush over the break. But mostly, I will be, um, I will be maxing and relaxing. Um, I, I appreciate the way that uh, those of you who who check into this stream and listen to the show regularly, uh, you'll message me. I get, you know, really a uh, very nice supportive, uh, message, uh, messages from all of you, except for Thomas Hager. Um, but, uh, it's really, it's, it's appreciated. You guys are seen, you are heard. I don't always respond to DMS very quickly just because I don't like to do a lot of screen time. Um, so it, it tends to, to take a little bit longer. But uh, I really appreciate everyone following. Uh, you know, please tell your friends if you enjoy what we're doing here, share it, subscribe to it, tell people. You know, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not in the Patreon thing yet. Hopefully, hopefully at some point, I would be very happy if I had a big enough following to to justify creating a fucking Patreon. Um, so that is uh, certainly among the goals here. So. Uh, I appreciate everyone who is uh, checking this shit out regularly and sharing it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as much I enjoy, I do enjoy doing this, but there is an energy that goes goes into it, um, and it's always easier on a Friday night to uh, to not be uh, sitting down and and fucking rambling for an hour uh, to to know you know, especially on a pre record night to literally talking to yourself in a room. You do feel like a bit of a fucking weirdo sometimes. Um, especially when you're dressed as such. Um, so I appreciate you guys, uh, tuning this in, uh, tuning in and making the effort worthwhile. Um, if you would like to follow me on the socials, uh, of course you search SACTAP live on YouTube, follow Mike Montone or at Mike's golden streams, uh, over on Twitter. It's at Mike Montone, Instagram, Gary underscore Moiler, M O Y L E R, uh, facebook.com slash the savage crew. And uh, the podcast, the audio version of this will go out and it will be available everywhere that podcasts uh, are available. So thank you guys. Have uh, have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Kwanzaa, whatever 
whatever your holiday is, enjoy it. Spend time with uh, people who are important and uh, we'll be back in the new year.